The March 2022 Visa Bulletin is out, and there is very little movement in most categories. We did see some significant movement in the EB2 category for India and in filing dates for Mexico family-based visas in every category. Stay tuned because we are going to take a look at what moved and what predictions for the coming months, including the possibility for retrogression in certain categories, are. And if this is your first time on my channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications notifications for regular immigration news updates. Before we look at this month's movement, which chart has USCIS instructed you to use? For the F2A category, the category is current on the final action dates. So USCIS announced that applicants in this category may file using the final action dates. However, all other family-based categories must use the dates for filing chart. For employment-based preference categories, applicants should continue to use the dates for filing chart this month. So what movement did we see in the March Visa Bulletin? Let's start with family-based categories. Like last month, we did not see any movement in final action dates. The F2A category remains current, and you can see that the date for all other categories remains the same as last month. Looking at the filing dates chart, the F2A category for all areas moved forward two months to December 1st, 2021. But as I mentioned, because these final action dates are current, people in this category are now able to file their applications. The rest of the movement we saw for family-based filing dates were in Mexico's preference categories. F1 moved forward two months and F2B one month, both to April 1st, 2001. The F3 category advanced five months to March 1st, 2001, and F4 advanced a full year to September 1st, 2000. All other filing dates remain the same as last month. Next, let's take a look at the employment-based categories. Again, there was very little movement, so I will just mention the categories that changed. The final action dates for EB2 India had the most significant advancement, moving forward four months to May 1st, 2013. EB3 for other workers in China advanced one month to May 1st, 2021, and the EB4 for El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras retrogressed almost two years back to May 1st, 2017. If we look at the employment-based dates for filing chart, we see many of the dates still remain current. The EB3 other workers category for China advanced one month to July 1st, 2015, and the EB4 categories for El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras also retrogressed almost two years moving back to June 15, 2017. This is very important for the SIJS or Special Immigrant Juvenile Status applicants. We did not see much movement this month, but what can we expect to see in future visa bulletins? We are still waiting to hear who will replace Charlie Oppenheim as the chief of the Immigrant Visa Control and Reporting and when the Bureau of Consular Affairs will resume giving monthly visa bulletin live streams on YouTube. There isn't a lot of information about what to expect in the second half of fiscal year 2022, but there are a couple of predictions to report. First, it may be necessary to establish China EB-5 non-regional center final action dates and dates for filing cutoffs as soon as next month, which would end the recent streak of the category remaining current. Also, if there is sufficient demand in the EB-5 category in the coming weeks, it is predicted that the EB-2 category for India may require corrective action, meaning a retrogression in that category as well. If you are interested in current visa interview wait times at the National Visa Center and how you can expedite your visa interview, I will include a link to that video here. I will also continue bringing you additional immigration news and visa bulletin updates as they are available. So be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't done so yet. Click here to watch this video next and I will see you there.